Well, you know, folks, with all that talk about Jameis Winston of Florida State, it is easy to overlook the amazing performance of Duke this season. They are here playing for the ACC championship. Heather Cox is with Coach David Cutcliffe. Let's go to Heather. Brent, thanks so much. Coach, thanks to your tight end, Braxton Deaver, the team's mantra this week has become shock the world. So what's your message been to convince them that it can be done? To shock the world, we have to play Duke football. There are certain things we've got to do. We've got to make big plays on defense at critical times. Offensively, we need to run the ball. We can do that. We've got a chance, as Braxton said, to shock the world. And coach, 12 teams have tried. None have succeeded. How do you stop Jameis Winston? Well, we've got to pressure him some, but the biggest thing we're going to do is we're going to challenge him. I mean, we're not going to sit back. Uh, we have to do that some, but we're going to challenge him and try to beat him. What else can we do? Absolutely. We're looking forward to it. Thanks, Coach. Brent? Thanks, Heather. Jimbo Fisher, fourth season as the Florida State head coach. His team won the coin toss, the middle of the field, and they have deferred. So Jameis Winston and the Noel offense will have to wait. There he is with Jimbo's son, familiar sight on the Noel sideline. That pre kick ritual, and we will see the Duke offense and quarterback Anthony Boone to, to start this game. Roberto Aguayo will kick it away. Devon Edwards and Shaquille Powell are back deep, and Edwards has been very dangerous as a return man. You see the big fellas over there on the Noel sideline on the far side here. Away for an ACC championship. This is Edwards, and it goes out of the end zone. It'll come out of the 25 yard line. So, uh, Herbie, let's bring Anthony Boone out. He actually grew up in this area, went to Weddington High School, and he's a redshirt junior. Yeah, junior who I think tonight you just heard myself and, of course, David Cutcliffe say the importance of running the football early in this game. And it's going to be a balanced attack, but the reason they need to run is most of their passing is built off of play action. So it's going to be a battle in the trenches tonight for sure to watch when Duke has the football. They'll use four running backs. Josh Sneed, another junior from Smithfield, North Carolina, will be the first alongside Boone. And off the read option, he gets the first carry and slips, and they take a loss right away. And Telvin Smith closing in for the nose. Yeah, Telvin Smith, one of the great leaders and somebody that if they want to run the football, they're going to have to account, obviously, for Telvin Smith. He and LaMarcus Joyner lead this team and are very active and physical against the run. Second down at 11. Quick toss to the outside to Jamison Crowder, their leading receiver. And Crowder is an athlete to keep an eye on, folks. He is number three, 5'9", 175. Herbie, let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. And, of course, Crowder is one of our impact players. Want to get him the ball in space. He's the closest thing they have to Florida State type of speed. Duncan in the backfield leads that committee of backs. Timmy Jernigan, number eight, in the trenches against the run. We already saw Telvin Smith, how active he can be, not only stopping a run, but also out in space. Shaquille Powell is a running back for this third and two. Boone's going to try to throw for the first down. Incomplete. Crowder the target again and coverage by P.J. Williams. And this is exactly what David Cutcliffe wants on third down. He wants to get to third and three to third and five to give themselves a chance. You can see how quick Timmy Jernigan gets off of the snap and got pressure there even without the blitz there on Anthony Boone. So here comes Will Mundy. He's an outstanding punter, and there is Kenny Shaw back deep. They're going to try to keep the ball away from him as much as they can. Here comes Monday, booming one now. Shaw's going to get a shot at this one, and nothing doing. Terrific coverage by that punt coverage team of Duke. And Jameis Winston will come out for his first series here tonight at the 24-yard line. And what could be said about this young man? Unbelievable stats. 3,400 yards, 35 touchdowns, only eight interceptions. He's been magnificent. He's been outstanding, and, and with all the buildup and the hype of a championship game, I wouldn't be surprising at all to see Jimbo Fisher on this drive try to give Jameis a chance to air it out and try to see if he can make some big plays throwing the football. Devontae Freeman, the junior from Miami Central High School, is alongside, gets the first call. 
take it out to about the 27-yard line. Jermail Bruce. Bruce made the stop for Duke. Jameis has enjoyed, obviously, a great year, and he's the beneficiary of a veteran offensive line, some outstanding wide receivers, and three very talented running backs. And he was the one question coming into this year, replacing E.J. Manuel, and obviously he's done an outstanding job as a redshirt freshman. The three talented wide receivers. Winston's back in the gun. Freeman alongside. Four members of that offensive line made the All-ACC team. And there goes downfield. Benjamin, incomplete. He was double covered, and so the Blue Devils show the Knoll coaches exactly what they're going to do. Patterson and Edwards were all over number one. And Patterson's a senior, and they let him play in the first series, and then he'll sit the rest of the game. They kind of pay homage to him because he's a senior. He's undersized, and you can see that they want to get the ball a little bit higher from Winston to give Benjamin a chance to go up in the air and make a play on it. Good effort by Patterson not giving up on that football. Remember last week, Benjamin, nine catches, 212 yards against the Florida Gators. Need seven on this third down. Great time. Winston going to take off. Now throw on the run down. Field Green almost grabbed it. Would have had a fingertip grab. Incomplete. And folks, it's three and out. I can hear Blue Devil fans applauding. David Cutcliffe said we need about 20 or 25 big plays on defense. Winston has all day to throw the football, but just through the fingers, an outstretched leap there by Rashad Green. And when Cutcliffe said 20 to 25 big plays, coming up with a third down stop, he considers that, of course, a big play to get the ball back to Boone in the Duke offense. We mentioned Crowder. He's back to return this punt. He's very dangerous. He's going to let this one bounce. And it's going to take a huge bounce for the Knowles. He probably should have fielded it on the big hop. Don't want to second guess him too much down <laughs> right there because it's that. dangerous with that coverage team coming at you. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. This telecast available in high definition brought to you by Vizio. Three and a half for both sides. Duke's second possession here for Anthony Boone. Shaquille Powell will open as his running back. Shaquille's from Las Vegas and went to a powerhouse for Bishop Gorman High School. He's number 28. Play fake to him, and Boone going to go down that sideline, and he overthrew the target. It's hard to shake those defensive backs. P.J. Williams step for step down that far sideline. Brent, I, I agree with you. I think this is the best secondary in college football. And P.J. Williams has really emerged this year, along with Ronald Darby, to give them two outstanding corners. And it's freed up LaMarcus Joyner to go over the slot and play that nickel spot. But he was walking, just started jogging there stride for stride with Crowder. Really just nowhere for Boone to throw the football. Second and ten, draw play. A little bit of daylight, and bring it on out to about the 17-yard line on that second down draw. You know, when you throw the football in first and ten, and, and I think it's smart by David Cutcliffe there to take that chance, and Kurt Roper, the offensive coordinator, you got to let them know that's in your arsenal. But when you do that, you get to the second and ten, and then you run the football, and now you get to a third and seven, which is where Jeremy, Jeremy Pruitt, who's a Nick Saban disciple, gets very creative with, with his looks and what he can do to you on third down and long. Well, big games may be strange for some of the players for Duke, but not for Coach Cutcliffe when you think of his pedigree. Third down, looking to set the screen and had to bounce it. It was blown up by that defensive front and absolutely nothing doing. Telvin Smith among those, along with Mario Edwards, and they simply took the screenplay away. They just sniffed it out. Third down and long. Duke understands that pass protection is going to be a problem on those third and longs, and I think Florida State maybe anticipated the screen, and you're right, Brent. Edwards and Smith just sitting there waiting for the ball to be thrown. Boone just threw it away. Knowles looking for field position. Shaw standing on the 43. On the run. Half a field to work with. Letting that punt go really affected the field position for this series for the Knowles. No question. They couldn't flip the field. Yep. And now we'll see Jameis again. Benjamin lost one on the double team, but he had a scoring opportunity here. Just a little bit too far in front of Green. 
Let's hurry, let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. Well, I think we all know the, the big playability of Kelvin Benjamin, Rashad Green, and they're going to try to look to get isolated one-on-one -on, -one on these corners. And Kelby Brown, an all-conference linebacker, 59, a guy you want to keep an eye on along with Ross Cockrell, the corner, the senior, more the veteran of this group of secondary folks from Duke. So Brian Fields has stepped in at that corner for Duke. First down, firing into the middle, complete to the 25-yard line that time. So Winston just picked up his wide receiver, Shaw. Yeah, good job by Freeman picking up the blitz there, giving him time to throw. The ball goes actually over Green. Good thing he let that go because right behind him is Shaw. I think the linebackers and the underneath coverage caught up with the backs and the underneath receivers, and it opened up a nice throw there for Jameis Winston. So Abram checks in as a pass protector. Freeman stays in the backfield. It's first down and 10 from the 25-yard line for Winston. Winston fires over through Benjamin. I'm Kelvin shocked. Benjamin was wide open, Herbie. I'm shocked, Brent, that you're seeing one-on-one -on -one coverage to the field against Benjamin, especially the closer Florida State gets to the end zone, the more often you're going to see Winston take this shot. This is a young corner, a freshman in fields who's in there all by himself against the bigger Kelvin Benjamin. Do not be surprised to see them go back to that matchup without safety help over the top. Carlos Williams, we expect to see him tonight, number nine. Checks into that backfield for the Knowles. Freeman's along with him. Freeman's going to follow the block, follow the lead, break the deadline. Freeman still struggling. Fumble! Ball was fumbled inside the five-yard line. Duke football. Cash recovered that, I believe, inside the five-yard line, the safety. And, Brent, I think Ross Cockrell, the corner, the veteran, actually ripped the ball out. Watch Six come in here late, get his hand on it right there, rips the football out, and as you said, there's a bunch of blue jerseys. Eventually, 16, the transfer from Ohio State, Jeremy Cash gets on the ball, but it's a great effort to not give up on the play. Boy, they are taking the word of David Cutcliffe. Guys, you're going to give up some plays, you're going to give up some yards, have some toughness to you don't give up and we need to make plays and that's making another play for the defense now the third running back Jalay Duncan from Mallard Creek High School here in Charlotte he's standing in the end zone with Boone Boone's gonna throw out of the end zone Cutcliffe gambles complete and he hits Isaac Blakeney well, Blakeney has big playability at 6'6", 235. Florida State takes away both the tight end, Deaver, 89. Also the receiver downfield, Crowder. But they did not account for the backside of Blakeney coming free behind the linebackers. Great recognition there by Boone. So Kinnett is on the field for the first time. He's the backup quarterback, but they use him as an H-back. He's number 18. He can throw off of it. Brandon Kinnett, redshirt junior. There he is for two games when Boone was out. They're going to use him as an ace book. H back all night long. Deflected incomplete. And beautiful pressure that time for P.J. Williams. And they brought the corner blitz, and Williams timed it up. You know, you can't get to these quarterbacks these days. They get the ball out of their hands so quickly. You see him off to the edge to the right. Times it up perfectly. What Boone was trying to do, he saw the corner blitz. It's a quick side adjust. You can't account for him with pass protection. So you throw it, and Williams got up just in time to be able to knock that down. Second down and 10. Ball on the 17-yard line for the Blue Devils. Pressure drops it off beautifully underneath to the running back, just short. But the first down is Duncan Telvin Smith making another play for the D. Boy, pretty good job here trying to get a shoulder on Telvin Smith. Telvin Smith's going to be very active, very instinctive linebacker. The receiver Crowder got just enough of his shoulder that time on Smith to slow him down because he was back there accounting for the back who made that catch and out of the backfield. Operated without a huddle. Boone taking the signal from the sideline. They spread the field. They're counting on this senior offensive line to hold up. They're going to run behind him for the first down. So the Blue Devils 
run after spreading the field. Duncan picks up the first down. They move the chains now twice in a row after that fumble. How about David Cutcliffe telling Heather Cox, how do we how do we stay in this game? We play Duke football. Th this is Duke football. Create a turnover, get the offense back on the field, make a couple throws, and then get it to third and two, third and three, to give you a chance that the option of running or throwing, and it also gets the defense a little bit more on their heels. What a calming presence in a big game when you get a veteran coach like Cutcliffe and you're such a heavy underdog. Duncan steps behind the left side of that offensive line. And let's talk about that front now. Cofield, Harding, Skura, Tomlinson, and Simmons. There is that offensive front. And note how many starts they have. Simmons has 50 Incredible. starts. Incredible. Cofield has 28 on the other side. That's unbelievable. Incredible. And that, that, that's why you come into a game like this against a talented team. You rely on the veteran leadership in that offensive line. And also the four backs in that backfield also have quite a bit of experience. Second and eight. Pocket holes. Fires first down. Beautiful throw to Crowder that time. First down and ten. That is three consecutive first downs for this Blue Devil attack. Well, he does a great job of using his eyes. Once you see this, let's roll the tape here. You, you'll see him look out into the flat. Does a great job right here getting Joyner out of the way. They're going they're tempoed the out. They worked on it. Great job of Boone just settling in. Nice drive here. We got a penalty here. Maybe they got it going a little bit too quick there, Brent. Yeah, they just jumped right up, Herbie. They went yeah. right back to the line. Illegal substitution on the defense. Oh. They caught him. Yep. Remains first down. They caught the defense. Caught everybody. Not expecting We're going to a that. Replay. They got Florida State. You could see Jeremy Pruitt is fired up. Look at me. Look at me. Because there's confusion there with all of a sudden Duke picking up a few first downs, substituting people in and out. Jeremy Pruitt is trying to do that, but against tempo, that's tough to do. And they change running backs now. Thompson. Knowles are going to call a timeout here, Brent. Oh, yeah. They're they're back on their heels all of a sudden on this Duke attack. This will be the fourth running back and five if you include Kinnett on the field as an H-back. Already the Blue Devils have substituted that many against Pruitt's defense. They waved the timeout off. There's a lot of confusion on the Knowles sideline right now. It is first down and five. One of the things that we note early, Anthony Boone has a very accurate arm. That's what Cutcliffe looks for more than anything in a quarterback. And look at this zip. Here comes Crowder on that end around. And he's out of bounds. And that was Joyner pursuing him out of bounds. And uh, he's close to another first down here. Looks like somebody from the staff has gone down. But yeah, that, here comes his tempo now. They, they, they kind of sense right now that they've got Florida State on their heels and they're cranking the tempo up. Bang in there with the running back behind the right side of that offensive line. Terrence Smith makes the stop for the Knowles. Thompson, he's from Fairburn, Georgia, out of Woodward Academy. Print doing a great job of rotating the backs in and out just enough to be able to keep them fresh. And at the same time, keep the tempo, keep your foot on the accelerator to try to get this Florida State defense tired out. Three receivers off to the right. Use the pistol. Bring Crowder in motion. Over to the boundary side of the field. Roll the quarterback and try to throw back. And the tight end is lit up. Braxton Deaver is crushed by Jalen Ramsey, a freshman and one of the best athletes on this Florida State team. Trying to get Florida State fast flowing, overly aggressive, testing their discipline to see if they're going to be back home as he rolled to his right. They tried to see if they could get them to overflow to the defense's left, hoping that the receiver would be there by himself. But great poise there and a good job of showing that discipline by the true freshman Jalen Ramsey. It's a six yard loss ball back at midfield. Four receivers. Boone. Far side incomplete and Crowder was going down over there might have slipped Ronald Darby the nickel back for the Knowles had coverage on him that time. Yeah, he slipped coming out of his break, but the coverage was very good by Ronald Darby. I'll tell you another thing we're seeing, not only Boone, 
when he has time making good throws this offensive line it's a very athletic front from Florida State and this veteran offensive line doing their job being able to try to give Boone as much time as they can to let him throw and note the clock 630 first quarter Knowles haven't scored yet from midfield Boone middle Another first down. What a throw on third down that time. Back to Deaver. This is a great throw to the tight end in the middle of the field. Watch him right in the middle. A little bit of confusion with Christian Jones, who's moved from linebacker to defensive end. That time he lines up as a linebacker, and he and Telvin Smith get mixed up a bit on coverage. And Deaver, good job of not only catching the football, but holding on to it in traffic on a big third and long. Needed 16, got 17 on the third down. Duncan in, play action. Boone going to throw to him down the sideline. He dropped it at the 13-yard line. They've got Florida State rattled right now and confused. They slid him out of the backfield. You see Telvin Smith pointing to him. Then he stands his hands out to say, guys, what's going on? They are confused right now with the job that David Cutcliffe and Kurt Roper have done in preparing this game plan. They're looking around, and they're breaking their coverage right now. And the physical ability of that offensive line, they're not having to keep extra blockers in. The fellows up front are doing a terrific job against this talented Florida State line. Quick throw that time. What a hit on Barnes. Oh, my goodness. And that was Williams again. Six feet, 190 pounds, and a lot of fast twitch. He didn't even back up. You see that? He didn't even get into his back pedal. He was anticipating that. And how would you like to be that receiver of true freshman Barnes on that hit right there? They've hit two third down plays on this drive. Remember, this, this drive started back on Duke's three-yard line, and they have driven to the Florida State 30-yard line. And now they face another third and seven. Try to bring pressure. Boone steps away, fires, drop. Fourth down coming up. Barnes couldn't hang on, and that was P.J. Williams. Man-to-man -man coverage. They brought the middle linebacker, Telvin Smith. The line did just enough to be able to give Boone enough time. You see, he looked to his right, and then he came all the way back to his left to make that throw. It would have been a heck of a catch to try to convert on that third down. So here comes Ross Martin. Not going to kick off tonight for Duke because they wanted him to concentrate on just this. David Cutcliffe, a veteran coach, wants points on the board if he can get them. This is a 48-yard field goal, and here it comes. So we're still scoreless. This was close, folks, but it just slid a little bit to the outside. But Florida State has been alerted. And you're watching the ACC on ESPN. And you can see Coach Pruitt over there with his defense. 5.07 remaining in the first quarter. Jameis Winston has Freeman as his running back behind the middle of that offensive front. Picked up about nine yards, and that was Dwayne Norman out of Jacksonville, Florida, making the stop for the Blue Devils. I think it's important for Jimbo Fisher here to just go back to playing Florida State football all year long. As much attention as Jamison Winston has received, it's been about that offensive line and running the football with Freeman, Wilder, and Williams. That sets up the big plays in the passing game. I almost feel like just watching here these first couple series, Jameis Winston's had an emotional week. He seems like he is very, very emotional out there early. He needs to settle into the game and let the game come to him. Freeman picks up the first down, and he's out to the 42-yard line. Norman with another stop. And if you're not familiar with Duke's defense this year, Jim Knowles does a great job of having an aggressive mentality. This is a Duke defense that, that kind of lives by the sword, dies by the sword. They're going to play a lot of man coverage. They're going to crowd the line of scrimmage. Jimbo Fisher likes that. He wants to run the football to get those safeties even more involved in the line of scrimmage. And then you can create the matchups that you want in the back end. Carlos Williams is back in as one of the backs. Remember, he was the lead blocker for Freeman. Same look this time. 
time, and it is read perfectly by Kelby Brown, outstanding middle linebacker. Well, this is amazing, Brent, to see Kelby Brown chase this down from behind. Watch the quickness and how he's able to dissect the play, and then right away, he's able to avoid the traffic and bring Freeman down from behind. He didn't have to take on a lineman. He's using that speed and the instincts to make that play. There is an offensive lineman down on the field. We're not sure, but it could be Big Cameron Irving down there, number 75. And while we have a moment, let's check in with Robert Flores. Robert. And Auburn, a huge winner today, sits there and roots for the Spartans. 59-42 over Missouri to win the SEC championship. Second down and 12 here for the number one ranked Florida State Seminoles, and they're scoreless with Duke. Complete no. That might be waved off. Loose ball, and they're going to make it incomplete. They are going to make that incomplete, and the target was hit by Singleton as he simply unloaded. There's number 33. Yeah, this is a true freshman making his play on a veteran in green across the middle. Perfect technique there, lowers his shoulder. Good job of timing that up. Looks like Green took that shot. Maybe we'll have to see, but maybe has the wind knocked out of him. Looked like he initially was going to get up. But the coaches told us this week, you know, you have Ross Cockrell, who's the, the, the elder statesman, and you've got five other players back there who are first-year players playing with him. They're very young, but very, very fast in the back end of this defense. Incidentally, Irving, while you were getting that update on some of the other games from Robert, Irving went off to the sideline under his own power. Appeared to be a leg injury of some sort. And uh, hopefully for the Knowles, of course, they'll be able to get him back in at, at left tackle. Irving, the blocker of the year, the ACC is, and he is back. Okay, after missing that play, and the green is now shaken up, and so he's going to have to take off a play. But I think the message has been yeah. delivered here, folks. The Blue Devils didn't come just to enjoy the banquet. They didn't come for a T-shirt. No. They're, they're, they're popping some people out there tonight. And the longer they stay in this game, the more they get themselves to believe that they can hang around with Florida State for four quarters. And remember, this Duke team is the best fourth quarter team in college football. Freeman, the running back, wins to the quarterback. Jameis is only one of five tonight. One of five for 22 yards. Going to throw for the sixth time, deep, and now he's one of six. And it's not working. Well, they are bringing pressure. They're bringing pressure right up the middle here. This guy looks like he's in man. He also comes, confusing him up front and eventually getting pressure, forcing Winston to get uncomfortable. You don't have to get a sack. You don't have to knock a ball down. Just make Jameis Winston feel that pressure and make him get the ball out of his hands before he wants to. So Crowder is back to field this case at Beatty punt. And let's see how he handles this one. He's one of the best athletes on this Duke team. He's going to get a great shot to play in the league. He's going to let this one bounce out of bounds. Right now, they're trying to get just like Jeremy Pruitt was doing with the defense. Look at the offensive staff trying to make sure that they're all on the same page. Florida State confused here in this first quarter. And Duke's doing a great job of mixing things up. Five different rushers and five different receivers with their hands on the ball. Sampson now back in as the running back. He gets his second rotation. Attacking that near side, and that was Crowder again with one-on-one -on -one coverage from Williams, and Crowder is not open over there. No, this is just a great matchup all night to watch. Crowder has got great quickness, a little inside, and then back to the out, but Williams doesn't bite on it for a second, and he is, again, stride for stride. That's going to be tough. One thing that Florida State wanted to do with P.J. Williams and the rest of his secondary, try to take away Crowder and make Boone have to throw to somebody else to make plays. Second down, Thompson is wrestled down by big Timmy Jernigan. Timmy Jernigan right in the middle of that, that defense and a playmaker. The quickness, 
of, of really a linebacker or a defensive back. It's just amazing to watch him at 300 pounds, how he's able to use his hands and his feet to get around the linemen and be able to make plays in the backfield. He's done it all year long for this Knowles defense. Now this is what the Knowles defense wants. Third and long against this team. shift trying to get pressure on Boone if they can and they do hit on the release not a first down well short of it Boone under pressure showed great courage that time because Williams was coming off the corner at him and he got into him but Boone completed the pass short of a first down he's right here it's the second time we've seen him coming on the corner blitz from the boundary closest to him and Boone actually doesn't see it until it's a little bit too late great call by Pruitt because even if they get the side adjust and make the throw they're still going to tackle him well short of the first down Monday on to punt again for the Blue Devils this will be his third punt of the night Shaw and it's a beauty. Let's see where they mark it where it went out of bounds. They're looking back at the referee and it did go out of bounds at about the 36 yard line. Continue to watch the battle in the trenches against Florida State's offensive line in this front six of Duke. Duke plays a 4 2 5. Let's see how that front six continues to hold up. So Freeman breaks to the 40 yard line on that first down run picked up four yards on it and Helton along with Singleton on the stop for the Blue Devils the coach is telling us this week one of the biggest differences with this Duke team has been the strength the conditioning the toughness of the defensive line and if you include those two linebackers this front six and they're off to a great start tonight second down and six Winston flashes it to Shaw on that flanker screen. He's got a first down. He's out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Cash, the safety there for the Blue Devils. Well, let's see if this can create a little bit of tempo and momentum for Jameis Winston. They run the football in the first play, and then they get the ball out in space where, of course, their receivers can make anybody miss. Kenny Shaw that time with a great catch, and it's the yards after the catch that have been such a gold standard this year for this Knowles offense. That was Winston's second completion of the night. And the first quarter is almost over. Two for seven. Crazy. And the Knowles are not on the board. A 29-point favorite here tonight. Play action to Freeman. Winston back deep. Going to have to take off. Battles to get back to the line of scrimmage. And you can see how strong that freshman is. He picked up a yard with A.J. Wolf hanging on. This is Tampa 2 coverage, which means the middle linebacker is going to run back here. And they're going to take away all the deep throws. They could not have called a better defense if they knew what play was coming. Look at it. There's nobody open downfield. They have three deep defenders. They cover everything underneath. Jameis Winston saw that. He didn't have anybody to check it down to. And by the time he decided to try to make something happen, it was too late. We're scoreless here. Michigan State leads Ohio State by a field goal. The Big Ten Championship game. Second down and long for Winston. Fires complete and Benjamin is out of bounds. I believe he has another first down at the 40 yard line. Fields had coverage there. What do you think, Brent, that this is going to be a test of Florida State's patience in the way this football game is going? The clock already ticking down here at the end of the first quarter. We're going to find out really if Florida State can be patient, be patient, and then look for the big hit maybe later in the game. But for now, the Blue Devils. And the Seminoles are scoreless at the end of the first quarter in Charlotte. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local ABC stations. We welcome you back to the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. And for Florida State, this is strange territory. The scoreless first quarter. Yeah, it, it hasn't happened all year. I mean, it, lot, we talked earlier. A lot of these games in the ACC, they've been up 35 to nothing in the first quarter. James Wilder will get a turn as the running back, a young man from Tampa, Florida, Plant High School. Gets his first carry, and he breaks to daylight. He crosses that first down marker, and he's at the 28-yard line before Fox can wrestle him down. Matias, 70, does a good job of climbing up to the linebacker, helping and open this up for Wilder. That, that, again, I go back to what I said earlier. With Jameis Winston pressing a bit here early and maybe looking for those big plays, important that the offensive line and these talented running backs start to get this offense going. Wilder again. 
to the 25 yard line now early in this game and, in, and again Jameis Winston eventually could settle into the game but again emotional week trying to make some big plays these guys are 60 minutes away from getting to a national championship maybe early just pressing a bit and missing some of his open receivers and also let's give credit to Duke for making some good plays to be able to get him pressured at times Jimbo Fisher goes back to Freeman and Williams Freeman in a deep set with Winston and there's a flag coming down that's a false start yeah. false start offense number 70 five yard penalty second down did, did you see Jimbo Fisher looking out at Jameis Winston what's taking so long let's go let's go make the call let's go Matthias guilty because he was sitting there and you're exactly right yeah, let's let's make the call he was offensive lineman the big fellas up front they get a little impatient they want to fire out so it'll be second down at 11 after the penalty. Winston going to take off, slipping, and he's to the 25 yard line. So this will bring up a third and no, about seven here, Herbie. Yeah, and this time Duke's able to get pressure just by rushing four. And it's also, it's a combination of good coverage, taking away his primary receiver, his secondary receiver, and then eventually the pressure getting to Jameis Winston. And again, when you have a quarterback that's still searching for a rhythm, it's easy to get him a little bit off-centered and off-balance there. And I think they did another nice job there on second down. Nick O'Leary would be a good way to break out of this so mm -hmm. short little curl. He's over there, the right side of this formation, trying to slip out. Winston looking in that direction, fires got O'Leary. Hey. Yeah, baby. At the 14 yard line. Good call. I was trying to go over here to get him circled for you, Brent. You're right. It was a great time to go to him right here. He gets held up initially at the line of scrimmage, but then eventually gets downfield. And this is what we talked about, improvising just enough. And, boy, Nick O'Leary especially does a good job when his quarterback starts to get in the trouble, trying to find an open space, and that time Winston finds it. That was Jack Nicholas who called me on it. So it's <laughs> time to get that ball to 35. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Doesn't have a touch yet. First down and 10 at the 14-yard line. Winston with great time. Fiery end zone. Benjamin got it. Touchdown. A tip of the hat to Kelvin Benjamin. Boy, Brent, what a throw by Winston. And how about the concentration here by Benjamin? We've seen him make a catch like this before when you and I had the Clemson game earlier this year. Does he hold on to it all the way through? It appears that he does. He gets a foot down. Great effort by Duke to get there, but that's a well-thrown ball. And Benjamin, again, high-pointing that football away from the defender to secure it. Maguire on for the extra point. And so quickly in the second quarter. Welcome back to the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. Florida State strikes first and leads 7 0 over the Duke Blue Devils. Guayo will kick it away, and Edwards is back deep with Powell for the Blue Devils. This is out of bounds. That's a penalty. So they'll spot the ball. Let's take a look at this touchdown. Yeah, look at the size of Kelvin Benjamin. This is Brian Fields, a true freshman at 5'11", going up against Benjamin, who is, of course, a much taller 6'5 wide receiver. One-on-one, -on -one, a little inside move, and then to the outside. The, the location of the football was key there. And you saw the safety cash get in, but he got in a little bit late. And once Winston sees Benjamin against Fields, one-on-one -on -one in the red zone, he will, single, he will take that matchup every single time, and that time he made the right throw. So Brandon Kinnett comes into the game along with Anthony Boone. Josh Sneed is also there. Boone takes the snap. And he is simply run out of bounds there by Telvin Smith from yep. Valdosta, Georgia, an All-American linebacker. Folks, we were told yesterday by somebody who really knows the NFL, Bill Polio. Of the 11, 11 Florida State starters on defense, he said eight, eight will make rosters and be drafted high by the National Football League. That's how good this defense is. Second down and 10. 
And that might be only counting the the that, older players just the starters. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you, look, you look at the, the some of these true freshmen who have made big contributions to this Knowles defense. Telvin Smith, Lamarcus Joyner, clearly the leaders of this bunch, along with Christian Jones, number seven. They're a little tweaked tonight that they only had one player on the all-conference team, and Duke had three. It's had a little bit of incentive for this Knowles defense. Second down and ten. Incomplete, and that time Brandon Kennett was the target. Well, good job, Terrence Smith, the middle linebacker, 24, getting his hand on that football. Terrence Smith and Telvin Smith, once the Knowles went and committed to putting Christian Jones down, it allowed Terrence Smith and Telvin Smith to become the two inside linebackers, and he has made a lot of plays in the second half of the season along with Telvin. Shaquille Powell back on the field as the running back. Almost intercepted in the middle by safety Jalen Ramsey. Look at the energy right now on the sideline from Florida State. This is where Duke has to be very, very careful in his football game. They battled. It's taken a lot of energy and everything that they've had to stay in this football game. But in the blink of an eye, Jameis Winston can get hot. Brent, you called for the throw, which he ended up making to the big tight end O'Leary. Maybe that gets him into a roll. But this is a big series for Duke's defense. Shaw is back deep. As the return man for the Knowles. Monday's punt sends him to the 18 yard line. And he's forced out of bounds at the 20. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC, the ACC Championship. John Swafford last night giving out the ACC Legends Award. David Cutcliffe at Duke named the ACC Coach of the Year. And Jameis Winston won four awards, including. Rookie and player of the year in the ACC and uh, Herbie more hardware to come uh, Yes, yes uh, quite a bit in Orlando and a big prize maybe Saturday night yeah, I think so. <laughs> Freeman in as the running back Knowles scored on their last possession Freeman Let's check in down below with Heather Cox. Heather? Well, guys, with so much going on with the coaching carousel this week, I thought you'd be interested to know. Moments ago, I found out Jimbo Fisher has signed a new five-year, $21 million deal. He's currently making $2.7 million, so that'll bump him up to a little over $4 million. This is his third contract since replacing Bobby Bowden, a formal announcement expected early this week. And, guys, this is an opportune time. If Mac Brown should retire, Jimbo Fisher's name has been mentioned at the top of that list. Yeah, indeed, uh, Heather. So Jimbo Fisher, and he certainly deserved it with the uh, record they're putting together here the last few years with the Knowles, and now they're just three quarters, well, two and a half quarters away from playing for a BCF championship if they beat Duke here tonight. People forget how tough it was initially replacing Bobby Bowden. He has done a great job of being able to survive that and now has his program on a roll. Wilder back in as the running back gets the call nothing doing didn't get started and the Duke defense was all over him brought him down for a loss at the 25 yard line look at the guys up front here on the end of the defense here on a Nicky does a good job of fighting through there of course Kelby Brown the all conference linebackers involved that's just reading your keys and understanding what to expect on third and short and beating your man at the point of attack great effort by the entire front seven there the Duke defense I don't think Hunter Kaysen, Brady, expected to be quite as busy as he's been here tonight. And Crowder is back deep. Duke is only one score behind the Knowles here in this game. This is a beautiful punt. Crowder driven back to the 24-yard line. He beats the first man, gets a block. He's at the 40, 50, 45, and Crowder to the 36-yard line. Gives the Blue Devils a huge lift with that return. He's one of the most dangerous punt returners in the country, averaging about 15 yards of return. With two touchdowns, and he makes Telvin Smith miss initially. And anytime you have a chance to make that initial guy miss, and you have his kind of speed and acceleration, you can pick up big yards. But that was real speed in the open field there for the Blue Devils. They got the stop, and then the big return by Crowder. A 40-yard return will be off a 52-yard punt. 
Knowles leads 7-0. If we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary here, Herbie. Yeah, and you look at what Duke's been able to do. They talked about having an ability to be balanced and make some big plays. They've especially done that on defense and on that big return there in special teams by Crowder. Great field position. Need a touchdown to tie. Powell is the running back alongside Boone. And this is Powell. They tried to loosen the defense up with that motion coming across, and he picked up a couple of yards on the run. Terrence Smith with the stop for the Knowles. Big battle up front. It's going to continue throughout this football game. You're going to win some and lose some. Duke is an offense that will take two or three yards at a time to be able to set up what they want to do, trying to get the ball out to Crowder or trying to make some plays in the passing game. What a big stop by the Duke defense to get the ball back to Boone after the Knowles looked like they had some momentum. Wow, hit at the point of attack and uh, pretty powerful on that run for a yard and a half or so. Telvin Smith with the stop this that time. Physical game. They are really hitting people. Jeremy Pruitt told us this week, the defensive coordinator from Florida State, he said, with all due respect to everybody we played, this is the best coached offense that we have faced all year. And he wasn't just saying that to be kind to David Cutcliffe and, and, his, and Kurt Roper and his offensive staff. But we're seeing why he said that so far tonight. They spread the field across again with four wide receivers on this third down. Boom. Firing intercepted at the 20 yard line. Crowder was the target. And it was picked off by Joyner. LaMarcus Joyner, one of the great defensive playmakers for the Knowles, comes up with his second interception of the season. His first was against Clemson. And Brent, the true leader of this football team, and all he does on third down is he reads the eyes here of the quarterback. That's what David Cutcliffe's talking to Boone about. Here's 20 right here. He knows it eventually. See him peek out there? He knew. I and mean, that's backyard football move. You look out at Crowder, their go-to guy. He gives him a little peek, then he sinks, kind of hides, almost baiting Boone to throw it. He does, and then he leaps up and makes the play. Jameis Winston has Freeman as his running back. 8.38 remaining in the first half. Winston with time middle and Shaw can't hang on. There's another jarring hit by Devon Edwards. Remember that name, folks. He's from Covington, Georgia. He's a five foot nine inch redshirt freshman. And he jumped this route, Brent. Amazing instincts for a freshman. I mean, they, they say he has the it factor. In fact, David Cutcliffe said he was recruiting him. He saw him playing high school hoops, and it wasn't his handle or the dribbling. It was the rebounding and the effort on defense that made him want to recruit him. I mean, we've watched Clemson and Miami against the Knowles, but this is the most jarring hits we've seen by any secondary, and there's another one. I mean, they're lighting these receivers up. That's Green. He was knocked down and forced out, and there's Edwards again. Yeah, Edwards all over the field. You and I both are seeing the same thing, and I'm sure people at home are as well. Great coverage. You see that Winston has some doubt. He's indecisive. He eventually makes the throw, but there's that Duke defense again to keep them short of the first down. You know, I'm noticing one thing with him. Winston's not squinting as much as he was in those earlier games. I wonder if uh, he may be playing with some contacts. I'm sure Heather will ask him. That's one of the questions we'll get to it <laughs> if they win at the end of this game. Third down and two. Freeman hit, slips a tackle, and then he's wrestled down short of that 40-yard line. David Hilton, the linebacker. I don't know about you or anybody else. Who expected Florida State to have to line up in high formation on third and short and scratch and claw and fight for a first down against this Duke defense? I don't think very many poop people tuning in tonight expected to see that, but it's been that kind of first half for this Knowles offense. First down and 10 from the 39-yard line. Winston sacked. Sacked at the 30-yard line by the freshman corner, Brian Fields. He's from right here in Charlotte, one of 15 scholarship players from the Charlotte area on this Duke team. Watch him creep and then come and watch the eyes of Jameis Winston. Does he see him? By the time he recognizes Blitz, it's too late, and the freshman disguised it and came late, and Jameis Winston in a little bit of a fog here in this football game, not recognizing that Blitz at all, and that one's on him for the sack. Second down at 19. 
Drops it off to Freeman. Freeman breaking to daylight, trying to get the first down, does get it. Cash makes the stop. But a little bit late to prevent the first down, and the chains will move. Yeah, the Duke defense is trying to get aggressive, and you see 59 right there. And Brown, who's their best linebacker, he had this Freeman. He had Freeman the entire way. But look at the effort by the offensive lineman, Trey Jackson, downfield, shielding Brown to keep him away from Freeman. And that's a heck of an effort there by the junior from Miami. A 22-yard run. They come right back with him. And he is down at the 45-yard line. Kelby Brown from Matthews, North Carolina, with the stop for the Blue Devils. For now, this is, this again, going back to this is becoming a game where Florida State's going to have to be patient with the way Duke is defending them, which means the running game, Freeman and Wilder and Carlos Williams become big factors. Eventually, you get your chance to make plays, but it's going to be about this running game, I think, getting this Lowell's offense going. Winston moving to the left. Slips and he's down at the 44 yard line. Let's send you now to Robert Flores. Robert, I think Spartans early. Yeah, no question because if that holds up, and remember the Spartans have an outstanding defense, that would undoubtedly send Auburn to the BCS championship to beat Florida State if, if the Knowles can beat Duke here. They're only up 7 0, five minutes left in the first half. Beautiful pass. And he is simply unstoppable. Kelvin Benjamin from Bell Glade, Florida, went to Glade Central High School. That's our only touchdown tonight. And watch Nick O'Leary occupy Kelvin Brown. You see two Duke defenders there. They kind of get caught up with Nick O'Leary. And you're right, Benjamin, especially on third down, and again, into the red zone is where he really becomes dangerous because of his size. But that's a great call that time by Jimbo Fisher. From the 27-yard line, quarterback draw all the way. Winston on the move, and he's taken down the 23 by Kelby Brown. Talk about Kelvin Benjamin being unstoppable, Brent. His last three games, 18 receptions, 339 yards, and six touchdowns. I think the biggest difference from what the coaches tell us, he's just more committed to understanding how important practice is. The little things about studying film have allowed him to become a more complete player this year for Florida State. So Freeman in as the running back. Winston keeps it off an option look, and he's to the 11-yard line. Irby, you were talking about Benjamin. If we get back to that, let's sure, take a look sure. at the replay. We saw the quarterback draw, this time a little freeze option. Duke kind of stretches it out. So a great job of cutting underneath that. Watch him kind of stretch it. There's nothing that's going to be able to go towards the, the boundary. So he just cuts underneath and kind of against the grain of that Duke defense to pick that first down up. So now Williams comes back in along with Freeman in that backfield. Williams, a converted defensive player. Here's his first carry of the night around the right side. Daylight. Touchdown. Hello. That's why they wanted him as a running back. Can't stop the freight train. You know, you're talking about a friend, Brian, uh, Bill Polian. He's going to want to keep an eye on Carlos Williams at the running back position in the future. And this is how quickly things can change in trying to defend this Florida State offense. The running game, few passes, but some good adjustments by Jimbo Fisher of including Jameis Winston in the running game and making the defense account for him. It opens up other avenues, getting back the ball back to the running back. Roberto Aguayo makes it a two-touchdown lead. Kirby Affleck says we're going old school tonight. Affleck. How many TD passes did Pro Football Hall of Famer Sonny Jurgensen throw as a senior quarterback at Duke 1956? Zero? Two? How did you come well, up with those numbers? I just wanted to talk about Sonny Jurgensen <laughs> being a Duke come, quarterback. How did you come up with those four well, numbers? Well, we just uh, four you're, ba you're baiting me in on A. Yeah, you're, exactly. you're, bait, you're, you're drawing me we in We're trying to draw a. you in on A. It's There's definitely no not you, D. You got that read perfectly. D, D, he didn't probably have that many completions that year, so I'm looking at, looking at going B. So Herbie thinks it's only two. Oh, here's the kickoff now. <laughs> it's going to go out of the end zone. So here we go. Here we go, Affleck. Come on, come on back now. Quickly, Affleck. Here it is. Yeah, 
Yes, oh. indeed. Two's the number. Look at that. Total young man. Now, how about the NFL, folks? Oh, 255 yeah. touchdown passes in 18 years. <laughs> I think he still does radio work for the Washington Redskins. Uh, oh, that's just great. a great, great guy. That I, I great. loved being around Sonny Jurgensen and Billy Kilmer when they oh, were the quarterbacks up there. Oh, yeah. We'd have a cold one after. There <laughs> comes Duncan. He's a running back for the Blue Devils. And a whistle before. Ball start. Terry Simmons. Offense. Number 72. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, coming up at halftime, stay tuned for the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway. Dr. Pepper giving away over $1 million in tuition, changing the lives of students across the country. Dr. Pepper, the official soft drink of the ACC Conference. That's Duke's first penalty here tonight. They're down by a couple of touchdowns. Just into the middle now. Christian Jones with the stop. Halftime report coming up next. John Saunders and Jesse Palmer, they'll have uh, scores and highlights. I don't think there's enough time to show the Auburn offense in its entirety. <laughs> 59 <laughs> points they put up in the SEC championship, and they are sitting back and just cheering their lungs out for Michigan State. The Spartans now lead Ohio State 17-0. 17-0, and Ohio State can't do anything on offense. Auburn, by the way, looks like they're averaging about 10 yards a carry today, not maybe more. So, jarring hit that time by LaMarcus Joyner. I want to tell you, know, I mentioned Joyner. When we were talking to him, Herbie, we said, how would you defend Benjamin? He said, I'd look for help. I don't know. This fella's pretty good. <laughs> I'm telling you like what. That. I'm telling you. Watch this hit right here. Benjamin Jordan has been doing it all year. He's 5'8", 190 pounds, a four-year starter. And when you get close to this team, as much as Jameis Winston gets a lot of the talk, this is the heart and soul of the Florida State team right here. LaMarcus Joyner. Powell is the running back. Third and long. The old defense can tee it up on this one. Crowder will try to cut back to the middle, and down he goes. Sharp tackling at the 22 by Telvin Smith. I think Jeremy Pruitt doing an excellent job of just settling the defense down. Remember early the first few series, they're yelling at each other, trying to make adjustments. Duke did some good things, a few wrinkles to confuse them. Now they've settled in. They're rotating different bodies in, and they're really playing much faster and playing Seminole's defense. The Knowles call a timeout. They'll have 248 to work with when they get that football. We welcome you back to Charlotte. Over there on the uh, Duncan took that big hit line, yeah. by Joyner. Joyner makes the interception. Then he shows his physicality by coming up, in, which he does so often for this Florida State defense. Meanwhile, the Buckeyes have just scored on Michigan State. About six minutes left in the first half. They make the extra point, it'll be 17-7. So the Buckeyes with the nation's longest winning streak, not out of that yet. Kenny Shaw is back deep. Fielding this near the sideline, out of bounds. Well, let's see what the Knowles want to do here with 244. They're up by a couple of scores. They're going to attack here. They've got four receivers out wide, and here comes the attack. Intercepted at the 35-yard line. Picked off to the 50-yard line is another freshman, Breon Borders from Statesville, North Carolina. What a big pick and a bad throw. Guys, remember when we did the Miami Florida State game and there was a ball very similar to this that sailed over on, on Jameis Winston, a throw that the safety made a play on? He's got him open. I mean, Green breaks free. He's right there in the in the seam of that defense. He just overthrows him. Ball sailed on him, and another true freshman. We've seen Brian Fields in the secondary. This time it's Borders, eyes up, makes a great play, and gets the ball back to Boone, which is very, very critical at this point in this game. What an opportunity here for the Blue Devils. Yep. Down two scores. The Knowles going on the attack at the closing minutes of the first half. Josh Sneed back on the field as a running back. Three wide receivers. Complete. Threw down a little bit low, and again, Brooks had a good shot at that ball. 
Second down and 10 coming up now. Boone is 9 of 22 for 58 yards. Winston is 9 of 16 for 120 yards. Both have thrown one interception in this game. The Knowles have turned it over twice, once inside the Duke five yard line here in the first half. So here's your second down and 10. We're ready for the draw play, and this will be third down and long. So here are the last few drives. Duke has simply been unable to move the ball against the Florida State defense. Here he talks about Jeremy Pruitt rotating bodies in and out. Here's a here's a guy, Nate Andrews, a true freshman who has four interceptions on the year. They have six defensive backs on the field, and they've had a lot of, of uh, plays in this first half where they've had six defensive backs. Andrews accounts almost as a linebacker and defensive back. He has a lot of versatility for this defense. Williams has Crowder one on one down at the bottom of your screen. Not even looking over there. Throw it outside and well short of the first down. And that was a fine defensive play by Darby. Caffrey had that football and quickly the speed of that Knowles defense closing in on him and with the clock running down, David Cutcliffe trying to make a decision here on fourth down. He's been known to go for it all year this year. In fact, 13 of 19 on the season. Need three yards. And it was a whistle before the snap. Maybe they didn't get it off in time. It was a line judge. There was timeout called by the sideline. So it was Duke calling a timeout. Before this fourth down, Cutcliffe realizing how important this decision is. If you give the ball to the Knowles right there with a minute and a half, here's a reminder. Winston is not always inaccurate. <laughs> what do you think, Herbie? Would you uh, roll the dice? You're down a couple of touchdowns. you got to remember Florida State gets the kickoff in the second half. Remember, they deferred. But I think if you we, give it to them here now. Well, I think what you're saying is, is, is very valid. This is a team that believes in a second-half comeback chance to be able to come back and win in the fourth quarter. I think it'd be very risky to go for it here, even though that's been your M.O. this year. I think it's a smart play here to bring your punter out. Yeah, so Will Mundy is back out on the field. And on into the end zone. Comes out of the 20. Let us go to Robert Flores for the update. Robert. They've got about four minutes there, Robert, until the half. And here we've got 123 remaining. Minute 23 with two timeouts remaining. And even though Winston has struggled, I think you'll see the confidence that Jimbo Fisher has in him. And this is Williams, a running back, who scored that second touchdown like a runaway freight train. And what a powerful youngster he is, a junior from Davenport, Florida. I believe that's not far from Tampa in that area. Mm -hmm. I like that freight train because that, that's how he runs. Oh, first down at 10. Winston high caught by Green and out of bounds with a first down. Stopping the clock of course over there by the 48-yard line. Duke's sitting back here. It's cover two here. Here that means you got to get the ball thrown right in there, which a good job of timing and making the throw here. You see how quick Green gets behind the freshman corner, and the ball is thrown on a line by Winston. Winston gonna put it back up again. O'Leary and O'Leary batters his way across that 30-yard line. You know, sometimes you get into tempo and you stop thinking so much. I think that's what's happened to Jameis Winston. He looks relaxed right now. The ball is accurate the way we've seen him throw all year. I just think that he's come into this game and he's been thinking too much about making everything perfect and looking for the big play. This is the first time we've seen him just settle and make throws. Number 27, time. Fires deep, far side out of bounds. Green caught it out of bounds. I just really admire that Duke has come into an ACC championship game. They've got Brian Fields, a true freshman, on one side without any safety behind him. He is isolated against one of the top receivers in the country, Rashad Green. He's out there holding up. Borders is on another side in one-on-one -on -one coverage. They came in here. They're going to be aggressive, and they're playing to win this game. Looking now to the left to Shaw. He's behind Benjamin. There's a penalty flag. 
Off the hook downfield to the 11-yard line, but there's a penalty flag. A couple of them, as a matter of fact, back by the 30-yard line. Now he held Ross Cockrell, who was trying to make a play on the football. Just grabbed his jersey. Number one, grab somebody's jersey. Why that never happens <laughs> never. with Benjamin? Cody, never. On the offense, number one, 10-yard huh. penalty, second down. Yeah, I let him go. I let him go. You grabbed his jersey. Watch this. I got him locked get, up here. Get, That's not even it. It's right there. From... Now I let him go. <laughs> <laughs> you did let him go, Calvin. No question about that. Oh, man. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> Find him up at safety. Oh, mercy. Now yeah, second down and a whole bunch. Here's Green again. He's the fastest of the wide receivers. If you line these three fellows up at the goal line and said, run to the 40, we asked Green who'd be number one. Without hesitating, he said, I'd be number one. <laughs> Benjamin and Shaw to follow. <laughs> Love the confidence. And Jimbo Fisher gets that his second time out. Well, there are the receivers. You throw in the tight end there, and uh, you can see what they've accomplished this season. Just a magnificent trio plus a tough tight end. Well, you have three guys that are chasing 1,000 yards receiving in one year. I mean, Green could get it tonight. Kenny Shaw is going to have to go crazy to have a chance tonight. It's amazing that they've been able to have that all year. But tonight, they've had to be a little bit more patient, and they've had to run the football. And you can see the offensive line and the drive where the Knowles were able to go down and put points up on the board. It started with the running game. Big Brian Stork did a nice job. Watch him turn to the backside and pick up a big block. And there's Carlos Williams following the other back. Freeman all the way into the end zone and eventually over the top of Devon Edwards for a big touchdown to get him up 14. So it's third down and 10. You've got 33 seconds. The ball is at the Duke 27 yard line. Pressure incomplete. And it's fourth down. Winston wanted a flag on that. He's that time Kelvin Benjamin was matched up again with the senior Ross Cockrell who's played him one on one and came across the field. Let's see if six Cockrell holds on to him. It looked like he held on to his right arm. That's what the crowd is reacting to. And of course the quarterback saying where's that flag. We want that first down. Here comes Roberto Aguayo. This is a 45 yard field goal attempt. Dumar with a perfect snap on its way and it's going to be good. 17-0 Florida State leading Duke here in the ACC championship game. Well your Lou Groza finalist includes Aguayo. He's a very, very fine athlete. It's interesting in talking to Coach Jimbo Fisher that after he watched Alabama go down in flames on that missed field goal, he changed his field goal protection team immediately. On long field goals, he said, I put two quicker defensive players on the wings. I changed four positions to make sure that that didn't happen. And then he pointed out that Aguayo is a very good athlete and that he too can get over there and tackle. So that return of 109 yards against Alabama, dooming probably, well, dooming certainly their three-peat, that play has altered how special team coaches now will approach long field goals. And just the taking the time to practice it, other than just maybe in spring ball or maybe in camp, that's something, because of the stage of that game, you're going to see special team coaches making sure players understand the rule, and understand how important it is on those long field goals to cover. Edwards and Powell are back deep. Wild kicks it away. No return coming out. 25 yard line. So let's take you back. Of course, you probably you probably haven't seen this play, have you, folks? <laughs> Never seen it before, huh? Now watch Davis. Now just watch the defenders here for Alabama. Watch the lack of speed in the tacklers on this play. That's why I want you to keep the eye on. You know he's going to go to the end zone. There just isn't anybody there who can come over, and that's what Jimbo Fisher and a whole lot of coaches that Herbie mentioned. Those are the things that they're going to change on that on that long kickoff. The, the holder and the kicker were the only two that had remotely close to enough athletic ability to make that play. 
Thompson, the running back for Duke, as we close out the first half. Jernigan with the stop. So even though Herbie was sluggish, slow starting, making mistakes, throwing interceptions, still in all, it's 17 to nothing. That, that's why the Nolans are number one. Yeah, it was, it was very sloppy, but they are up 17. And I think they're going to go in at halftime and talk about just settling down. You don't have to impress anybody, guys. Just take the game as it comes. And by the way, Duke's playing a heck of a football game to be in this game at this point at 17 to nothing. And Winston leave the field and the Blue Devils are going to the locker room. And let's go down now to Heather Cox with Jimbo Fisher. Coach, after a scoreless first quarter, I saw a lot of communication between you and Jameis Winston. What was your message to him? Just relax and play. We missed a couple opportunities. We had a fumble down there on the one. We could have got in. And then we had a couple opportunities down here. We missed a high ball on the, the 80 coming down the middle. But trying to make plays, being aggressive. I like it. Just relax. Keep taking the little things, and we'll, we'll make the yak yards and play. And you talk about those turnovers, two in the first half, fumble in the red zone, and an interception. How do you address those in the locker room? Yeah, we already addressed them right in here. So we're fixing. We're moving on. Thanks, Jimbo. All right, Heather, you know, with that wind blowing down there, you might want to find yourself a hat for the second half, girl. Well, here it is now. It's 17 0. Seven holes with the lead as we come to the end of the first half here in Charlotte. Stay tuned after these messages with a Capital One halftime report. And we welcome you back to Charlotte, North Carolina, and the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. It's part of Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. 17-0 Florida State leading Duke with Kirk Herbstreit. I'm Brent Musburger. Scoreless first quarter, uh, Herbie, and uh, Jameis Winston a little bit shaky early, but seems yeah. to have settled down. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he's, he's had a crazy week, and maybe it affected him somewhat. You know, an award show last night that he stopped by. So I think early in this game, he was pressing. He has the Heisman coming up Saturday. Maybe he's trying to impress folks. I don't know. But here he doesn't even pick up the corner fields. He was coming on a blitz. The ball sails here late in the first half over the top of Green where Borders makes an interception to get the ball back to Duke. And I think it's it, you heard Jimbo Fisher tell Heather Cox it's important to go in at halftime, settle things down. The challenge to me for Duke, it's four quarter game. It's one thing to hang around right. for a half. Now you've got to be able to go out there and maintain that effort you played with in the first half because Florida State, it can flip like that and they can all of a sudden catch fire. And of course, the Knowles will have the ball to start the second half. So Jameis Winston will get back in his first Half number is 12 of 21, 171 yards, a touchdown, and an interception on a ball. It seemed to sail on him a little bit, too. So the kickoff man here tonight was Willoughby Whitfield back deep. Watch number seven. Great speed. And uh, we're going to take a little look back at the Pacific Life game summary. Duke could have struck first, but they misfired on this field goal. Yeah, they missed a field goal, and, and all of a sudden, towards the end of the first half, Joyner comes up with an interception, gets the ball back to Winston. And this is Winston's touchdown pass where Benjamin makes a heck of a play on the football to go up and make the touchdown. And just when it thought maybe he was on a little bit of a roll, he throws that pick, and now we'll see how he plays here in this second half after the adjustments that they were able to make at halftime. That was a 44-yard kickoff return by Whitfield. Jameis going for it all. His receiver covered, and it's incomplete. That was Benjamin who caught the touchdown pass back in the first half. And Ross Cockrell. Interesting story. We mentioned that Charlotte, North Carolina is a hotbed of Duke talent, and Cockrell is one of 15 players recruited here. And if you go back and David Cutcliffe, when he was an assistant coach at Tennessee, he recruited this area. And the running back coach across the field tonight for Florida State is Jay Graham. He was a fine running back in Tennessee, recruited by Cutcliffe when he was an assistant at that school. So here we have Freeman. He crosses midfield on that second and 10, and Cockrell makes another stop. Now there is Jay Graham, and he was a load oh. as a running back. He was a talent and running back for David Cutcliffe and just a uh, just a, a, a low center of gravity guy that took the pressure off the passing game for sure and now leading this talented Seminoles running back crew. Born more reps for number nine Carlos Williams. Here comes the power back got the first down folks expect more and more playing time. 
Don't know if they're going to be playing Auburn or Ohio State in that championship game, but both of them better get ready for number nine. Uh, Jimbo Fisher has known really since camp when they moved him over how special he is, but he's had a couple guys in front of him that have earned their stripes, Freeman and Wilder, and it's not about talent. It's about getting more and more reps and settling in, but you can see when he gets his hands on the football and he squares his shoulders, he not only has power, he's got the most speed of any of the backs that they have. And he's getting some of Wilder's reps. And you know, do I feel a little rain in the air? Maybe did I, uh, it could be. I missed him around here tonight. There's Freeman trying to swing it. And so far, we get a report from Heather down below just when the rain Edwards with the stop. And uh, the Knolls are moving the ball pretty good here in chunks, Hervey. Boy, how about Cameron Irving here? Talking about going to the whistle. I don't know if he went too far beyond the whistle, but he blew up. Defensive player from Duke. On a Nicky, 84. I mean, he took him almost to the bench and put him on his back. After the play, personal foul on the offense, number 75, 15-yard penalty, second down. That's Irving. Yeah, that was him. I mean, I, I, I happen to be watching him his, the entire way. He locks up on his guy, which is what his coaches wanted to see him do. He's trying to open up that hole. He gets away with a hold here. And then if, if you continue to watch him, I mean, he – he buried him into the sideline about eight, maybe ten yards out of bounds. One of many award winners on this Florida State team. And four of those offensive linemen that you're looking at were on the first all ACC team. And you can see why when they open holes like that for Freeman. We've seen both Freeman and Williams in that backfield together doing some great things. One of them, I'll tell you, Freeman is it's known as a runner. He can catch the ball to the backfield. He's a powerful player, but he's led the way for Carlos Williams at times, and they've both been lined up back there together. Florida State has never lost to Duke. They are 18-0, and and they've scored 40 or more points in 16 of those 18 games and 50 or more in 10 of the 18. Winston shovels it forward. Mistaken judgment that time. But it's an incomplete pass, but that could have been intercepted. Just a not only a bad decision, but I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is the first time all year that Jimbo Fisher has seen his quarterback act like a freshman. And, and it's it's been going on the entire game. That, that's that's a, just a poor decision. He's very, very fortunate that Brown does not make the interception here. It's one thing to miss Shaw, who was open for a first down, but then to start to improvise and just throw it underhand, I think that tells you a little bit where his mind is right now in this football game. Remember now, Crowder is very dangerous. One of the top 10 pump returners in the country, waving everybody away from this. And it's going to go out of bounds, and Duke will have their first possession here of the second half. So Irving with a personal foul. Coach not happy with that either. Duke's first possession of the second half. And remember, they have five first downs, and they all came on one drive. Remember when we showed you that missed field goal? All five of the Duke first downs came on that 15-play drive back in the first quarter. They haven't had a first down since. But now they break that record on that first down pass to Crowder. And let's check in down below with Heather. Guys, look for Duke to try to get their wideouts more involved here in the second half. Coach Cutcliffe said Florida State's corners really limited their effectiveness. They're going to try some new things on play action to get those wideouts involved. They also want to try throwing the ball in the middle of the field. Coach Cutcliffe thought they might have more success that way as well. See, Heather, a quick game there to try to get the ball out of the hands of Boone and to the middle, as Coach Cut told you, where, where they may want to try to attack. First down and 10. Josh Coleman is now in as the Duke center. They have changed centers. This snap to Boone, and uh, they'll run Sneed here on this first down. So second down coming up. Remember how important it is for this offensive line to assert itself up front. There you see, it looks see like the they're starting. changing shoes there. Right. Trying to get a new shoe on him and get him back out there. Very athletic center out of Columbus, Ohio. Went to Worthington Kilbourne High School, I believe, in that area. Yeah. Second down and eight. Here comes Joyner. Blitz. They've got Joyner and 
almost broke early. Turner trying to get in, picked up by the running back. Boone on the move. He'll hike it out of bounds. You know, there's just a pressure of Joyner. You saw it, I saw it, everybody saw it, including Boone, who was right here. But by him coming, he's picked up by Sneed. There's really no need to get out of there. The blitz pit is picked up, but by feeling that pressure, even though he had the, 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 the time to be able to make the read, he really shortchanged himself by leaving the pocket prematurely. There's just no one there to throw once he, he's ended up scrambling to the boundary side. Third down and nine now for Boone, and he's hit on a release and a diving interception. And that was Smith. Telvin Smith off the deflection has got the interception for the Knowles. And Nate Andrews comes on the blitz. And we saw earlier in this game Jameis Winston miss a blitz. And I don't think this time they picked it up. And I don't think they, they even they get confused. There were two blitzers on, off to the right there. The linebacker ended up coming on the blitz and the safety. And then they dropped the coverage from the other side. It confused the offensive line. And the Knowles catch a big break here. Great grab by Tobin. Boone a little shaken up on the play as he goes over to the sideline. Jameis, right after the turnover, fires O'Leary out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Nick O'Leary, a dangerous target right here. Anytime you can get him matched up out in space against a safety, that's a matchup every time that the Knowles should be able to hit. And Jameis Winston, that time in rhythm, gets the ball out there to O'Leary. Freeman checks back in with Williams now. They're the running backs for the Knowles. Here's that look again. Williams, the running back, and he's stacked up, still going. What an unbelievable second effort this young man has. Carlos Williams. 225 pounds at 6'1". I thought Jeremy Cash, the, the nickelback, had the, the play stopped, but that effort, that strength that Williams has got through that. This is where Kelvin Benjamin makes a lot of plays for Florida State. He'll be at the bottom of your screen, matched up one-on-one. -on -one. Shaw goes into the, the slot. He brought the play in. There's Shaw, touchdown wide open. He brought his own number in from the sideline. He was the substitution. He brought the play in, lined up in the slot. And when you play as much man-to-man -man as Duke plays, you're going to blitz and you're going to get to him from time to time, and you're going to blitz and leave your freshman alone against some veteran wide receivers and make some easy throws for Jameis Winston. Philip Dumar, the long snapper from Jupiter, Florida, will send it back to his punter, Beatty, who will put it down. Aguayo tacks on the extra point. Aguayo has broken the ACC single season scoring record here tonight. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. The number one team starting to strut away. What a wonderful host Charlotte has been this weekend. Largest city in North Carolina. It'll host the Belt Bowl Saturday, December 28th on ESPN. There's the ACC championship trophy. And Florida State gunning for its 14th ACC championship. We'd love to take that home. Here comes Powell. He's the return man. And he's out to the 25. There's a lot of penalty flags flying on this one after Powell went down at the 25 yard line. Personal foul. Face mask. On the kicking team, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. When you talked about how Shaw called in his play. He's right here, matched up against a freshman one-on-one. -on -one. But look at the blitz from Duke. They end up bringing eight defenders, and they created the one-on-one -on -one matchup for Shaw against the freshman Singleton. Gets to the inside, and once he made that inside move, watch him set it up to the out quick step to the outside, back to the inside, and obviously Jameis Winston saw the matchup that he wanted, despite Duke bringing eight defenders to try to get pressure on him. First down and 10 for the Blue Devils being shut out 24 nothing now. Boom. Oh that could have been badly picked off. He tried to put some touch on that ball and it got away from him on the release. 
I, I think this Florida State defense now is understanding what Boone is trying to do to get back in his football game. He's actually trying to throw it to Kinnett, the backup quarterback. Ball is high. Remember, the Knolls have the two interceptions. They've been able to turn the turnovers into points, 14 points off of those turnovers. Second down and 10 for the Blue Devils. Complete the zip on the ball. That was nicely thrown by Boone that time to Isaac Blakeney. Becomes obviously tough when, when you're down 24 and you're going up against this defense and they know that you're going to throw. You're going to have to mix in a run here or there. They're pinning their ears back. They're playing press coverage, trying to disrupt the timing with Boone and his receivers. As you said that time, good job of being able to squeeze that one in there to Blakeney. Third down and two. Trouble. That play was blown up. Barnes was the receiver all the way, and Terrence Brooks, the safety, said, uh uh. Again, that is just man to man coverage. Good job by Christian Jones. Watch seven here. He doesn't bite on the fake at all. He gets pressure on Boone. And how, I mean, look at that. Brooks is there. Telvin Smith is there. Lamarcus Joyner is there. The Knowles know what's coming, and they are dialed in. Busy punter for Duke, Will Mundy. Shaw back deep. Shaw decides against trying to run up and make the catch, and that'll be dead at the 14-yard line. So Jameis Winston, the favorite to win the Heisman Trophy, will put it in play there. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Jameis Winston, almost all of the polls that we've seen indicate that Winston could become the second consecutive freshman to win the Heisman after never before in the history of the award. Running himself to the left edge, forced out of bounds. So let's compare Winston with Johnny Football, Johnny Manziel, who won it a year ago. Herbie, the, the passing numbers are, are very, very comparable. The touchdowns are off the charts for Winston, but look at that rushing you pointed out. Yeah, I, we, you and I were looking at this at the break, and it said makes you really appreciate what Johnny Manziel did, not just throwing the football, but for over 1,400 yards rushing, 21 rushing touchdowns. I don't know if we'll ever, ever see a year where you're throwing for almost 4,000 and rushing for over 1,400. Yeah, and of course, he's been slowed by injuries. The Aggies have lost some games. I guess everybody expects Manziel to move on to, to the league next year. And here comes you know who. I'm telling you, number nine, Carlos Williams has some future. I told Bill Polian when he came up here at halftime about, I know you're talking about all that defensive talent. Make sure you keep an eye on Carlos Williams. And, he obviously agreed. You know, I think showing that Heisman promo and the numbers, I think this is the first time that maybe all the hype about the Heisman maybe affected Jameis along with some other things, obviously. This is the first time I've seen him press and at times look like he is a freshman and look like maybe some of the pressure has gotten to him. And, you know, when we saw him play against Clemson and Miami, the smile, the leadership, the intangibles, we haven't seen a lot of that from him tonight at all. Down and nine. Keeps it this time. Picks up a few yards on Banjo. <laughs> Let's go down below now to Heather Cox. Well, Kirk was talking about a lot of those intangibles that you see from Winston. A lot of that has to do from his mentor, E.J. Manuel, who played last year for Florida State. Now the starting quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. I actually talked to him by phone today from Tampa, where he's getting ready to play Tampa Bay tomorrow. He told me that he and Jameis are like brothers. They text or talk at least four times a week, and he's really been able to give him advice. He's given him lots of advice on how to handle the spotlight more in a minute. Benjamin can't stop him. Touchdown, Florida State. 
his second touchdown catch of the night. And you can see how difficult it is to bring Elvin down in space. That's a 54-yard touchdown, Winston to Benjamin. How about the instincts by Heather Cox to get out and get out fast because the ball's going to Benjamin, and it's almost unfair. He is a tight end body running downfield with tremendous speed. They'll tell you he's one of the fastest players on this entire team. When he gets out in the open like that, it's just tough to bring him down. For this game, even started. Heather Cox said to me that Kelvin Benjamin is the number one money player on that Florida State football team. Oh, <laughs> and who's to argue with her? She knew. 31 nothing Knowles. Welcome back to Charlotte. Now, before the touchdown, we were talking about what an influence Bills quarterback E.J. Manuel has been on Jameis Winston. E.J. told me he's given Winston lots of advice on how to handle the spotlight. He said, I've taught him that everyone is watching every move. And Jameis leaned quite heavily on E.J. during the investigation. E.J. told me Jameis feels like he can finally breathe easier now and be himself again, and that E.J. felt like that relief would help him play even better. But, Herbie, you said he you haven't seen him play this tight in quite some time. What does he need to do to play loose again? Well, I think the thing that he's able to do now, I think we're all seeing, is the game's starting to settle down for him here in the second half. And the defense is making plays. They're running the football. And I think that was the plan by Jimbo Fisher probably in the coming out in the second half. Nothing doing for Edwards on that return at the 12-yard line. Let's go back now to this touchdown strike. Yeah, here's Benjamin who's going to work into the middle, but really it's Green who's trying to clear it out that sets it up and clears the zone. But I'll tell you, the safety here reacts late. Singleton right here reacts late to come up to the football. He should have been there a little bit earlier. I think he got caught in between. Should he go for the interception or should he go to try to hit the bigger receiver, single, uh, Benjamin, makes a poor decision there and an easy touchdown once he caught the football. McCaffrey goes in motion. Powell, the running back for Duke. And he'll be tackled with about the 19-yard line. Jernigan's right there in the middle of it. So there he is. Kelvin Benjamin. The one thing that he has improved on dramatically, and it was shown on the first touchdown, he doesn't try to throw defensive backs away. Now, we had him on an illegal block, but they have matured him a lot, and he knows you've got to go for the football, first of all, if you're a receiver, and not worry about that extra contact. And that's just maturity he'll be on his part. I think maturity, and he's just become more polished. And just taking his craft more serious. I think most of his life, he's been bigger, he's been faster, he's been able to just show up and, and be a dominant player. And to be a superior player for, for Jimbo Fisher, he's had to learn the nuances of playing the position and studying it and trying to get better at it. And he's put that time in, and it's paid off for him. Terrence Smith with that tackle brings up a third and four for the Blue Devils. Duke with only one first down outside of that first quarter drop. Six first downs total against this defense. Five on one draw. Trying to get another one here, and they do. McCaffrey wearing that familiar 87 that his daddy wore. Daddy McCaffrey, there's a penalty flag thrown down on the play. foul hands through the face on the defense number seven 15 yard penalty from the end of the run first down Christian Jones and let us go to Robert Flores here it is first down and 10 for 48 remaining what they were trying to tell you is that Ohio State has tied Michigan State in the Big Ten Championship game and, uh, Rolling free on that is Powell. I thought he was down, and there's a fumble. Now there's a battle for the loose football. And he never touched the ground. Florida State recovers. He never touched the ground. 
Watch him carry this football out to the outside. He actually comes down on top of Telvin Smith. The hand down, the knee never touched. Reminds me of Michael Dyer of Auburn against Oregon. Has a big play. And then J looks like Ramsey, the freshman, Jalen Ramsey, pulls that football out of there. But he never, his backside or his back never touched the ground. Like they may review it's a the, replay. the tail end to see sure. if his knee touched. They've stopped the play on the uh, on the field. I think his knee's down, but I thought it was down. I looked at it live, but I don't know if that's conclusive or not. Watch the left leg. With that shoe on the defender there, I'm not sure that you can include what we think happened. That's the problem. Take a look at this. You be the judge at home. Is that left knee on the ground? Is it making contact right there? Sure looks like it to me. ACC crew will take a look at that. And they'll make the final decision. We have Doug Rhodes over here in the booth with us and uh, Doug uh, of course from the ACC officiating group does a fine job. Doug what did you see with that replay and down on the field. Well the the, the uh, replay that we look at it looks like his knee is down. Now again the standard is that indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt. So I'm not real sure if they have another view in the booth besides that one. But um, to me it looks like his knees down. We all agree. <laughs> That's a miracle. <laughs> the director of officials. Doug, you do a great job with the ACC crews that we've had this year. And uh, when will you learn who's going to the various bowl games, the officials? I'll be this Sunday. Uh, once the bowl decisions are made, uh, all the conferences will know which, which games we have. We have to wait to see who's going, really, before we decide where we're going. But Here's another look at it here. Yeah, that's the view right there where I, I just chose the knee down, but you can't really see the whole ball in that one. So to rise to indisputable. Well, that's a great question about the officials, because I think a lot of people watch these bowl games, Doug, and they wonder how does certain crews get assigned to certain games? Exactly. After review, it was determined that the runner was down prior to fumbling the ball at the 35 yard line. Please reset the game clock to 430 and start on my signal. So there you have it. The Blue Devils keep the football. And uh, a heck of an effort on Powell's part when he did, as Herbie described, Michael Dyer on that championship yeah. drive, the winning drive, I might point out, for Auburn, when they drove down and kicked the field goal and won the BCS championship over Oregon. So it's a first down and 10 now. And Crowder is lined up in the backfield. Crowder's going to throw back. He does to Boone. And Boone drops it. Beautifully executed play set up by David Cutcliffe and Boone just can't hang on. Well, I think Boone peeked up to see where P.J. Williams was before he got hit and he would have been able to make this catch and had a couple steps before Williams turned. But you see him glimpse. He, he took a little peek to see where the defender was before he caught the football. So to be second down and 10 and Powell is back on the field. David Cutcliffe, of course, as a coach, Coach Peyton Manning at Tennessee, Eli Manning when he was the head coach of Mississippi. Boone fires deep high and incomplete. Blakeney was the intended receiver. Let's check it down below with Heather. Well, something to note when you're watching Anthony Boone play, the physical therapy staff is working on his right shoulder every time he's off the field. This is a player that's finally healthy after being hurt during the season. He said these last two games, I finally feel like myself, but he is battling a right shoulder in the second half. Yeah, and I think he was shaken up on that one interception too, Heather. Uh, Derek Mobley, better known as D-Mob, our director, reported that uh, he might have been he might have been injured on that play. So Boone is back now. Play action hit. Goes for it because he's not sure if that's a fumble or an incomplete pass. 
The Knowles say they've got it. The officials agree that instant replay is going to take a look at this arm movement. The pressure was coming from Nate Andrews, the freshman, and Jernigan was there on him. This might end Boone's night, the beating he's taken. Watch it, Harvey. Yeah, here's the blitz. They're showing the blitz from both sides. Now, you got to figure out where it's going to come. They drop him, and they bring him, but that's the disguising of Pruitt's defense, and eventually they get home. The offensive line didn't know, know which way to slide, to the left or to the right, and Andrews gets there. Mr. Rhodes, I'm going to bring you right back in, sir. And uh, they say right now that they've got the ball back. So they gave the ball to the Knowles. Winston down the middle. Got Shaw at the 35, 30, and out of bounds. Doug, obviously they ruled immediately that that was a fumble, and that was an easy call for the officials yeah, on the field, they, correct? they did, and I actually looked at it here, too. That was a correct call right away. It's, it, the arm, the hand comes forward, but it's empty already. The ball's been knocked out. You get the ball to Winston, and all of a sudden he comes right back and gets the ball downfield to Kenny Shaw for another big play for this Knowles offense. Williams and Freeman are the running backs for the Knowles. And they bring the power back around. It is clear now that Williams is keeping James Wilder Jr. on the sideline. And when you see both Freeman and Williams together, we've seen it five or six times now that Freeman blocks for Williams. When they're apart, a lot of times you're going to get the ball into the hands of Carlos Williams. So Auburn or Ohio State get ready for number nine. He's coming again. First down. Three minutes left here in the third quarter. Buckeyes, Spartans are tied in the Big Ten Championship game up in Indianapolis. Stanford pulling away from Arizona State, 38-14. The winner there, of course, goes to the Rose Bowl, the 100th Rose Bowl game. Play action, Winston going to keep it himself. Freeman to block, opens the way, jumps for touchdown. Let's see the signal. That is his ninth carry of the night. They've been running that play and running that play. This time they run a boot naked off of the same action. Fake it to Carlos Williams, roll him around to the left, and he goes airborne and holds on to that football. Looked like across the plane to get the touchdown. Abreu attacks on the extra point. So, Doug, in that particular issue, I know fans at home are wondering, as he came across the plane, the ball comes free. Take a look at this and tell us what you saw there. Well, all it takes is the, the ball breaking the front edge of the imaginary plane of the goal line. Once it touches that line, there really is no such thing as a fumble in the end zone. It's immediately dead, and it's a score. So that that's the score. The minute it breaks the plane, it, the play's over. You thought I was going to let you just sit up here and drink Coca-Cola and watch a football game? I, right? I, I dozed off for a second, but I appreciate you waking <laughs> me up. <laughs> ah, Herbie, I tell you. The Knowles are again demonstrating why they're number one. Yeah, they are. They got off to a slow start, but they've been able to settle in and take complete control of this game. And if I'm whoever's playing the Knowles in a national title and they get into that two back look, you better be ready for Carlos Williams following Freeman. And then that, that naked action off of that with a roll Winston away from that ball fake to Carlos Williams. That is a nice little wrinkle to the rest of the offense and what they do. Yeah, I agree. They've added that. And you made a, a great point about Freeman, either being the lead blocker or the ball carrier behind him. Mm -hmm. So here come Powell. Return this kick now for the Devils. Now, now we do have a new quarterback, all right? And they have gone to the to the young man because of the injury. Kinnett is in. Brandon Kinnett. And Josh Sneed is his running back. So Boone over there on the sidelines and Kinnett stepped in when Boone was injured earlier this season, missed a couple of games. So he's a veteran quarterback. He has rushed for 30 touchdowns in his career. That is a Duke record. 
Second down and five. Nothing doing against that defensive front that time. Walker making the stop. So they're against a very tough defense. Tough, right? tough, tough night. Anthony Boone and David Cutcliffe knew coming in it would be a tough night to be able to try to move the ball. They, they hung in there early. And I'll tell you, Anthony Boone has had a great year at getting this team to Charlotte and to the ACC championship game. Had a broken collarbone, missed three games, but really did a nice job of replacing Sean Renfrey, one of the better quarterbacks to ever play at Duke. They went to a bowl game last year with the Belt Bowl right here on this field. They're going to a bowl game again this year. First time in history that Duke will have gone to back-to-back -back bowl games. Crowder is pushed out of bounds, cannot get the first down because of P.J. Williams from Ocala. Went to Vanguard High School. What a good, good defensive back he is. Boy, P.J. Williams, Jalen Ramsey, true freshman, Nate Andrews, true freshman. You have two seniors back there with Terrence Brooks and LaMarcus Joyner. Ronald Dar Darby is the sophomore. Been saying it all year. This is the best. You're watching the best secondary in the country tonight. Will Monday. Monday again for the Blue Devils. Shaw signals fair catch at the 26-yard line. And of course, Wilder is in now. So he's alongside. And good play fake by Jameis Winston. And he hit Green for the first down. Rashad Green. There's the timing that he's been known for all year. Great throw. Good job of getting separation by Green. He's starting to see he's not thinking as much as he was earlier. Now he's just worried about executing. And I think just moving him around a little bit instead of just sitting back in the pocket, putting the ball right on the money. Winston. Benjamin couldn't hang on. Cockrell was right there with number one. And those, those officials always like to watch Kelvin Benjamin make sure he's not pushing off. Well, he had his hands on a football. That's a catch he normally makes. Then he takes a little knee there from Ross Cockrell. They've been going back and forth all night tonight. Second down and 10 for the Knowles. Cruising to another ACC championship now. 38-0 late in the third quarter. Wilder to daylight. Breaks a tackle. Strong run to bring on that Williams fellow. I'll compete say, with him. Isn't it great to have healthy competition in the same backfield? Yes, sure I is. mean, you, you, you've got Devontae Freeman gets his carries, and Carlos Williams comes in, and Wilder says, wait a second, before you go by me, I want a few carries myself. These guys are all trying to do the best they can when they get their hands on the football. That's the end of the third quarter here in Charlotte. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local ABC stations. Welcome back to the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship, Charlotte, North Carolina. The Florida State Seminoles are 15 minutes from Pasadena and the BCS Championship game on the night of January 6th. Closing out their fifth, their 14th ACC Championship, tying Clemson for the all-time mark. They did it in 32 seasons here in uh, Wilder. Or I should say 23 seasons. Clemson's been a member of the ACC for 61 years. But who will the Knowles play, Herbie? It's either going to be Ohio State, leading Michigan State now, or Auburn. Auburn, a huge winner, 59-42 over Missouri. It'll wind up in the hands of the voters and the computers tonight after the Big Ten game is over. Kelby Brown shaking up on the play. He's played his heart out. Yeah, that, that SEC game looked like a uh, just a, a shootout there for a while. Both teams going back and forth. It, it, it will be interesting because Auburn pulled away late in that game, and Ohio State dug themselves a hole, and they've come back, but still a long way to go in that game. It'll be a it'll be an ongoing debate. That's the way it is the every year, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at this week's BCF standings brought to you by Vizio. Florida State one, Ohio State two, Auburn three. So let the debate begin between Buckeye and Tiger fans. And Alabama will not be three-peating, but they are the apple, we are told, of the Orange Bull's eye. 
So certainly they're going to some BCS Bowl. And how about Oklahoma impressing everybody today going into Stillwater and beating Oklahoma State in Bedlam. And if this was next year and you had to pick four, depending on what happens in Indianapolis, this would be one of those years where it would make sense if Ohio State ended up beating Michigan State where there was a line after the first four teams. First down and ten. Intercepted, I believe, yes. Picked off beautifully by Borders, the young man. Well, how about Borders getting underneath the route? It's the second interception. What a great job by a freshman to be able to get his head turned around and locate the football. The ball comes in late, but Borders does a great job of being able to get his head turned around and come up with that interception. This ball is thrown late by Jameis Winston. He waited for Green to be open, and then he threw it, and by waiting that long, it gave Borders time to get underneath it and make that play. Kanet stays in as the Duke quarterback. Duncan will be his running back, so Kanet is now running the team. Boone has been shaken up here tonight. Kanet keeps it, battles for about three yards. Let me play devil's advocate after I remind everybody to uh, to stay tuned for local news, except on the West Coast for your late local news, or uh, we're going to go to ESPN for Sports Center. That's it coming up next. And uh, now it looks like we've got a uh, yeah, the quarterback cadets down, but now he's down. It's at least he got up, but because the trainers went out there, he'll have to come out for at least a play. So Boone will come back into the game. You can play devil's advocate on your four. Yeah. I don't know how you can keep the Pac-12 out of a 14 playoff because of the schedule they go through. Mm -hmm. They play nine conference games, and it's time that Alabama gives up Chattanooga and plays, <laughs> you know, somebody yeah. like Missouri. Sure. They need to add that other conference game. Strength of schedule should matter, and I believe that Stanford yep. with two losses should be in the playoff. Now, there you are. Sam. There you go. And, you know, it's Nick Saban's one of the only coaches in the SEC who wants that ninth game. And they should get it. I agree. Second down and six. But there are many people that would look at Stanford as good as they are. There have been some inconsistencies at times. They went to Salt Lake and lost to Utah. And for a lot of people, I mean, the fact that they've lost a couple games. But I'm with you. That's a, that's a grind in the Pac-12, week in and week out. We're going to put up a graphic in the Rose Bowl and show you the 12 coaches in the Pac-12. I believe right now they have the best best group of coaches of any conference in the country. And then they get Chris Peterson That's added to the list. That's third down and one. <laughs> it did help that. First down. Final 13 minutes here. 38 nothing close. So here's, here's a question for you about Florida State right now. When does Jimbo think about taking Winston out of this game, rest it, give the backup A some reps. Coker, of course, is injured, so he'd have to look elsewhere and risk injury of these players coming down the stretch. How about Sean McGuire? When does Jimbo say, I've got to look at the young man? Because he just threw an interception, he might let him come out, back out for another series. But I think after that, that's probably about it. Boom, back, throws far side, incomplete. I mean, for Florida State, I. This has just been an amazing run this year where the last couple of years it was maybe a little bit premature to expect them to get up into a national championship race and they weren't quite ready. This is a veteran team that's handled the pressure and obviously now they're, they're getting close to capturing an ACC championship and getting out to Pasadena and playing in a national championship. But this program, it's not just what they do in the fall, as you know. They're recruiting and Jimbo Fisher He's lost a number of assistants. They're doing a heck of a job in Tallahassee. Boom fires complete short of the first down. He lost up to six assistants last year, including his defensive coordinator, Mark Stoops, who took over in Kentucky as a head coach. Northrop. So they're using some of the subs on defense already, but Jernigan comes back in on this on this third down and six. There is Prude, who came from Alabama, learned under Nick Saban. As a secondary coach at the Crimson Tide, done an excellent job with the Knowles. One of the things that Pruitt does, a lot like Nick Saban, look at the corners on third down. Look how tight they play 
and then really jam and force those wide receivers to try to work to get downfield, and then they bring pressure to go along with it. Deflected. It's fourth down. Andrews. What a good looking freshman oh, deflected that. I think Nate Andrews, there's so much talk about so many of these other players. Nate Andrews' versatility. They blitz him. I mean, he, he's essentially. He's a safety that plays a lot of linebacker at 5'11", about 210 pounds. But to be a true freshman and to come into this defense and to be so multiple involved in Jeremy Pruitt's scheme, boy, he's had a tremendous year. Kenny Shaw is back deep. Monday sends him out of bounds again inside the 10-yard line. What a good-looking punter that young man is. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. Florida State cruising to an ACC title now. Congratulations to the All-State Ultimate Road Trip winner, Catherine Carvola. She'll join Kirk in New Orleans for the All-State Sugar Bowl and then head out to Pasadena for the Vizio BCS Championship. She'll be watching Florida State in that game against either Ohio State or Auburn. So... 11.58 to go. Winston's still in the game. Freeman's his running back, and now Jimbo wants to go to work on a little clock with the running game and our Pacific Life game summary. Herbie quarterback and favorite target. Yeah, you, you look at the way the game started and then how it's ended. Jameis Winston hasn't had a great night. Two interceptions, a little sluggish. Ball's gotten away from him. But, of course, when he's needed to make plays, he finds number one, Benjamin. Kelvin Benjamin has had a great second half of the season, really the last four games, becoming the go-to guy and the big playmaker within this offense. You know, Freeman is the first all-ACC, first-team running back for the Seminoles in 15 years. The last one heard you heard of Travis Minor, a little bit short of the first down on that run. He has run for over 80 yards here tonight. Incredible when you think about that. It's been that long since they've had an all-conference back. And Winston's the first all-ACC first-team quarterback for the Knowles in 13 years or since Chris Winkie Jeez. back in 2000. So think about that now. Rashad Green, the first all-ACC first-team wide receiver for the Knowles in 10 years. Sesquipanzo Thorpe back in 2003. Third down and two. Winston from the gun. Fires complete to Green. Got another first down. Now let's go to the BCS history because if you go way back to the start of it, Bobby Bowden with a backup quarterback lost to Tennessee and T. Martin. Then they came back against Michael Vick in a great game in New Orleans and won it. But they lost to Oklahoma down in Miami 13-2. Mark Richt, of course, was leaving the team as the offensive coordinator to become the head coach at Georgia. And they were shut down that night down in Miami. Freeman going to work on that clock a little bit more. If Florida State wins tonight, and it looks like the umpire took a tumble, they would have a 13-0 record for the first time in school history. And they'll set the ACC and school record for wins in a season. Winston now, Herbie, with 300-plus yards passing. Yeah, he's had a – it's remarkable to think he's had 300 yards passing, but you, you said at a break, you know, or maybe he was on air, you said he's not – doesn't seem to be squinting as much. Maybe he's wearing contacts. We'll find out from Heather. Maybe the lights like – yeah. the lights here maybe not giving him as much of a problem. I know he's talked about that. The lights sometimes bother him with his vision. He's in a foot race short of the first down. He lit up here on the near side. Wow. There's a penalty flag. Norman was taking him out of bounds. And I saw his buddy Red Lightning over there. He's a ball boy from Florida State. And I think he's one of the first friendly faces to reach Personal him. foul on the defense. Late hit out of bounds. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. There's Red, there's Red Lightning. Working for the ACC on that Duke sideline. Folks, he's a number one no fan. Now, wa watch this hit. 40 right there. Sides and Look out. at that. Yeah. My goodness, I'm surrounded by blue. Oh. And there, there's, there's lightning right there. That's the first friendly face on that Duke sideline.
Duck telling me that he must be obviously out of bounds. No question. Yeah. yeah. First down and ten. Running back is Abram. His first carry of the night, so they feed the fullback. Always feed the fullback. That's true. Throw them, sometimes they'll throw him the ball in the flat. Keep him happy. Get him a. It's 38 nothing with under nine minutes to go. It's time to get 41 some touches. You know, we were talking about Aguayo as one of the finalists, and now it looks like the officials are going to stop play here for it. There's a laser being pointed on the field from the stands. It needs to be stopped with security. Please take a look at that. Section 343. Wow, wow. he even had the section. Take a look. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it's right on him. It's on Jameis. It's a heck of a job narrowing down the section by the boys. Not only did they watch the field, they got the stands on lockdown too. I'm not sure Herbie I've ever seen that. Second down and eight. Benjamin bobbles it, hangs on, forced out of bounds over there, but it was a completion. Now what's going on here? They're tangled up over there. Jameis running down the field. The officials quickly separate the players. They took a big hit there from Singleton, another freshman, and then it looks like Cash got involved in it as well. Benjamin's starting to really put up some big numbers now. Five catches, 119 yards with two touchdowns. Brian Stork trying to keep everything calm down. He's the big center. Jameis hit on the release. Touchdown. No, Larry couldn't hang on. And there's a penalty flag thrown down there. It was Norman again. Norman hit Winston out of bounds, got the 15-yard penalty, and this time he separates O'Leary from the football. Let us see if perhaps this is going to bring the targeting rule in. I think it's helmet to helmet. Well, the quarterback was hit high. That's number one, okay? No. Uh, it's, it's back on Winston. We've got, we've got O'Leary down. He drew the fly. Watch the hit on the quarterback, folks. Yep. Got him on a pad, no question. That was Brown who got up high on Winston. See him lower his head. That's the targeting part of it that the officials look at. Let me uh, bring in Doug Rhodes here again for this. Uh, Doug, uh, oh. let's watch. With the crown of the helmet on the defense. Previous play is under review. So, Doug, let's, let's come in here. Do we have one of the expulsion rules here because of targeting? Is this pretty easy for them? Yeah, yes, we do. Uh, two types of targeting. One is if you hit a defenseless player above the shoulders. That wasn't the case here. Uh, it was using the crown of the helmet. So, this is going to be an ejection foul. The uh, the Duke player lowered his head, led with the crown of the helmet, just as, as Herbie explained. It's the intent, right? Absolutely. It, it, yeah. And for fans at home to be able to separate, this was not helmet to helmet, but the intent when he lowers his head right it towards the end. That's what you're trying to eliminate and take out of the game? Correct, it is. And, and I think sometimes the terminology saying helmet to helmet is a misnomer. Right. Helmets collide all the time on the field. There that is. isn't in and of itself a foul. But when you lower the head and use the crown, it doesn't matter where you hit the player. That's a foul. Doug, go back to the, the hit on Winston as he released the ball. I'm sure you saw that, too, in that read. What would you think about that? Well, we always – we have some traditional fouls that have been around the game for, for 100 years. Roughing the passer would be one, and that, that may have been close to roughing the passer, After but it was review, not a target. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Number 40 is disqualified from the game. So, Norman, Dwayne Norman from Jacksonville, Florida, is out. Now, Doug, there's no more games left. Let's, let's go back in and take a look here at the Winston hit. And uh, you, this could have been roughing thing. the passer. Watch him lower his head at the end. See that? 
Yeah, again, he does lower it some. I, I really don't think that's sufficient. It might be rough in the passer. It's so close to the release of the ball. You want to make sure that, you know, the defender can't change direction in midair. So you, right. you have to be very uh, uh, vigilant on, on making sure of that. Okay, the uh, Knowles prefer to run. One more question, because this is the end of the regular season. Now, Duke will go to a bowl game. Will the young man have to sit out the first half? Is that, there, that's is there correct. A carry over? It carries over. That's correct. Okay. Well, thanks. We really appreciate the help on that rule. That's been a controversial rule all year. Herbie, you brought up such a great point. Doesn't have to be helmet to helmet. Doug Rhodes, the head of the officials in the ACC, clarifying a lot of things for us here tonight. 7.30 left. In, and now they want to get Freeman a touchdown, and they do. Dante Freeman. All ACC running back. Barges in for a little frosting. Not only is it Freeman, but it's that offensive line and some good running, though, by Freeman. He's able to get through some of the traffic there. Duke's starting to wear down, not just because of getting into the fourth quarter, but obviously down now after this extra point, 45 to nothing. You don't play with the same energy and confidence on the defense. They're not getting a whole lot of help from their offense tonight. He was on the second all ACC team. The Knowles are rolling to Pasadena. All you in Tallahassee, you get your airplane reservations. You're headed west. Well, help us beat cancer. The V Foundation awards 100% of direct donations and net proceeds of events to fund cancer research. Log on to JimmyV.org or call 1 800 for Jimmy to donate. We appreciate all your help in that great cause. So, Florida State shutting out Duke 45 to nothing. This will give them 19 straight victories over the Blue Devils without ever losing. It'll come out to the 25 yard line. So we'll take a break and come right back. Jameis Winston and the Knowles are cruising west. Thompson the running back. And Boone stays on the field. Powell and Thompson are the running backs here. A nice eight-yard game for Powell. Brad Edwards of ESPN is out at Tempe, Arizona, where he's been watching uh, Stanford pull away from Arizona State. Brad, of course, the, the lone question reigning for the house, Michigan State's gone back ahead of Ohio State in a back and forth game. If the Buckeyes rally and win a close one, what will the voters think of Auburn with the 59-42 win and the Buckeyes with a comeback victory in that number two position? You know, Brent, I would expect that you probably have a few more voters than last week that would switch over to Auburn's side in that argument. But given where I expect the computers to be, I, I think the best case for Auburn, they would need at least 75% of the voters to be on their side. And, and that is, that's a lot for a one-loss team over an undefeated team. So my gut feeling is still that if Ohio State comes back and wins, uh, comes back and wins, they should be number two. You know, it was interesting. I saw you on ESPNU, and you said that you had spent more time looking at the computer numbers, and that's where you thought the Buckeyes would enjoy the advantage, right? Right. That, you know, I, I thought because of the schedule strength edge that Auburn has over Ohio State, uh, and Florida State for that matter, that they might be ahead of those two teams and several of the computers, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen, which means that Auburn not only has to pass Ohio State in the polls, they've got to pass them by a comfortable margin, and you know what, generally, there are people out there who are just um, philosophically opposed to putting a one-loss team ahead of an undefeated team, no matter what the resumes might say. And I, I think in the end, that might be what saves Ohio State if they're able to come back and win. And uh, when you were inside, Brad, uh, watching Stanford, were you impressed by how they pulled away from Arizona State tonight? Oh, absolutely. You know, Stanford it looked, looked like the same type of team that we saw against Oregon. They were just physical and really from start to finish they just just outmanned Arizona State and the lines of scrimmage. Brad you go back to those computers I, I think a lot of people don't understand how the computers work when you see Auburn with the one loss but the strength of schedule in their favor why is it that they are behind uh, Ohio State and, and Florida State in the computers you think? Well I think it's the impact of that one loss you know that uh, 
that's just the way that the computers are set up, that, that one loss is a big deal in this sport because there's such a small sample of games, whether you're playing 12 or 13, you know, the difference that it makes in your winning percentage overall uh, is very significant, unlike, you know, in basketball where you had maybe a, you know, a team with three losses compared to a team with four losses at the end of the season. It's just so much of a bigger deal in football. Brad, uh, we enjoyed uh, the conversation. Go back in and watch the wrap-up. Thanks for being with us. We look forward to seeing you and Herbie tomorrow night when uh, all the questions will be answered. Thanks a lot, Brad. All right, guys. Take it easy. Here it is, third down and six for the Blue Devils. Five minutes remaining. Boone. First down, nice pass to Crowder, who's out of bounds here on the near side. You know, the, this offense of David Cutcliffe, last year he had Sean Renfrey, and he ran more of a pro style, more of what he ran when he had Peyton and Eli Manning. And he's telling us this week, this offense, more of his own reads, spreading teams out with one back and, and a quarterback and a shotgun. More of Heath Schuler going back to the, to the mid-90s. He said, we're systematic. We adjust to the personnel and to the quarterbacks that we have, and they've done a heck of a job of that this year with Anthony Boone. Uh, back there along with Brandon Kinnett. Yeah, one of the great stories. Actually, I voted for David Cutcliffe for uh, for Coach of the Year. I, I couldn't split Malzahn and Pinkle in the, in the SEC. I think Cutcliffe's done a wonderful job. There's a, there's a first down at the 35, Crowder again. and uh, Many times it is where you have a team that's undefeated from an easier conference competing against a team with one loss. It's had to go through a grind. Herbie Crowder has really taken charge here. About three times in a row now, he's made terrific plays. And you know, uh, for the Blue Devils, a little pride on the line. They'd like to get into that end zone and get a touchdown. Yeah, and, and pride on the line for Florida State, too. Remember we talked about it? I was on the field before the game, and some of the Seminoles players saying that, you know, that's not a myth. You know, we, we, we feel slighted the fact that Joiners are only all-conference player and that Duke has three. So I know they have a lot of pride on the line here, too. They want that shutout. First down run by Thompson and uh, coming up after the game stay tuned for the Ford wrap up with Robert Flores. Well a win tonight and Florida State will have 15 consecutive victories. That's the longest streak for the Knowles since they won 17 straight from August of 99 to October 7th of 2000. Now keep in mind the only team ahead of them the Ohio State Buckeyes trail 27 24 in the fourth quarter. They're the two teams with the longest win streaks in the nation. Play action. Bobble incomplete. Helen Crowder couldn't hang on to. Coming up after the game, of course, we've got interviews. And then you go to ESPN3.com. Live coverage of the trophy ceremony. To Mr. John Swafford will give the Dr. Pepper ACC championship. Dari Noka, he'll be our host down there. And Jimbo Fisher on the... Knowles will take another souvenir back home to their extensive collection. Second down and ten. Flash to the outside and Powell again. But you know, one of the things, Herbie, and you said it earlier in the first half, was repeated. There were some very hard hits delivered by young Duke players. And you said the future looks bright for this team in the Coastal Division. It really does. I, you know, I think they, they've got a great nucleus of seniors, but there's enough youth on this team. And I think now David Cutcliffe's been here for six years. They're recruiting. They just feel that they're better. You know, they feel that this has been a process these last six years. And the guys that were here those first couple of years have as much to do with this year as the guys that are on the current team. But I think you got to like the future. And I think people will look at Duke football very differently after the year that they've enjoyed this year and the job that David Cutcliffe has done. With the clock running down, gets it off on the juggling reception there by Reeves, David Reeves out of Greensboro. David Reeves along with Isaac Blakeney are guys that are that are players that just need reps to be able to show what they can do. They've got they've got big playability. It's just a matter of getting them more reps. Sneed to the five yard line. Minute 40 here. Second and goal trying to get a touchdown. 18 and 0 all time. Never lost and uh, never had the shutout. But this is Duke's first trip to the red zone 
Second down and goal. The Devils would love to stick one in there. Sneed touchdown. Josh Sneed, Smithfield, North Carolina. Smithfield High School. He scores the Blue Devils' first touchdown of the night with 101 remaining. And it's the backup defense, but it doesn't matter. As you said, for Duke, pride on the line. It's a program that's trying to build for the future and you want to fight to the very end. This is a game that's going to help these guys, and uh, you know, I don't care if it's against that backup defense or not. It's good effort there by Josh Sneed and that offensive line to finish off a 14-play drive, 75 yards. Ross Martin tacks on the extra point. <laughs> Gatorade bath for head coach Jimbo Fisher. <laughs> One is never enough. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Folks, they're looking to drown somebody out here tonight. <laughs> Jimbo looking at his quarterback, and they sneak up on the blind side. And then Jameis <laughs> goes after him with the side. Now, watch this. Here's his son. Watch this, folks. Look. Oh, yeah. Hey, Pops. <laughs> that is classic. <laughs> So here comes the uh, the Duke kickoff with with a minute remaining. Uh, you know we've been talking about David Cutcliffe, uh, Herbie, and, and uh, the job that he has done. Whitfield is the return man. He goes down. A reminder: get your NFL Sunday started on ESPN, 10 a.m. Sunday NFL countdown. Chris and the gang they have all the stories. Learn the key to the Seahawks defensive back Richard Sherman's success. Before you set your lineups and catch fantasy football now, 11 a.m. on ESPN2. First down and 10. The ball is on the 24-yard line, and here is Sean McGuire. So here is the backup quarterback for the Knowles. You can see that Brian Green, the freshman, he gets the ball carrier, he gets the ball, so some of the youngsters. Herbie, uh, David Cutcliffe's son, Chris Cutcliffe, who was a coach on this Duke staff, is now the head football coach at Oxford High School in Mississippi. His team was in the 5A State High School Championship, and uh, we, we get word from George Hill that they were beaten by Picayune and Jackson missed tonight of that tough final, 42-35. So, High scoring, shootout yeah, down yeah, by a touchdown. Tough, tough night for, uh, for the Cutcliffe family here. Second down and nine, Florida State wrapping up the ACC title uh, using the, the fullback, and that's Stevenson, a freshman uh, from Florida. And here comes David Cutcliffe across now to uh, to congratulate Jimbo Fisher. 